Good day, lightsaber addicts. Last video, we went over class four droids. So today, we're gonna to take a look at class five droids in the Star Wars universe. But first, let's get a refresher on all five classes. Class one droids worked in the fields of mathematics, physics, physical sciences, and medicine. Class two droids were programmed for engineering and other technical sciences. Class three droids were programmed to interact with humans. Class 4 droids were programmed to fight, while Class 5 droids, which we're going to talk about today, were simple labor droids that did menial labor that no one else wanted to do. So now that we went over that, let's get into this. The Dumb Series Pit Droid Designed for maintaining pod racers, pit droids were cheap, durable repair droids. Pit droids stood at a height of 1.19 meters but had the ability to fold into a compact form when not in use. This feature could be toggled by tapping their nose. It was a droid that was manufactured by Servodroid Inc. and constructed in large quantities on Cerulea for use in labor, repair, and light construction. They were also associated with repairing pod racers at pod racing events. Their most remarkable feature was their immense strength, able to carry objects many times their own size or weight. This enabled them to repair machines such as pod racers at a remarkable pace. Their skeletal design and long, thin limbs were dwarfed by their broad, flared, dome-shaped heads. In the center of their head was a large, round photoreceptor equipped with multi-spectrum scanning. The photoreceptor could detect microscopic damage in metal and other solids. The DUMB series worked best in large groups and had built-in comm systems that allowed them to communicate with those in their unit. The antenna on their dish-shaped heads served to transmit directions to other droids, allowing a group of droids to collaborate on a project more efficiently. Their immense strength would make a malfunctioning or unattended unit extremely hazardous, possibly resulting in significant damage. The most hazardous of these was a damaged on-off button, the risk of which caused many owners to keep ion blasters on hand as a precautionary measure. If a unit was past the brink of repair, they would need to dispose of, almost always resulting in the disintegration of the unfortunate droid. Pit droids could compress themselves into a compact box-shaped package. A tap on their photoreceptor would signal them to return to their upright position, and vice versa. There were also launchers specifically made to automatically decompress and release individual pit droids one at a time. Power droids. Power droids were boxy droids with two or four legs that served as mobile batteries capable of powering a variety of machinery and vehicles. They were commonly encountered throughout the galaxy due to the versatility. Some models of power droid were referred to as gonks after the vocalization. Notable power droid models include the EG-6 power droid produced by Vero Line Systems. The EG-4 was found on Echo Base on Hoth and the GNK power droid manufactured by Industrial Automation. A plunk droid served with the Open Circle Fleet during the Clone Wars. The ASP-7 The ASP-7 was a model of labor droid manufactured by Industrial Automation and employed by the Galactic Empire. It was a simple yet extremely versatile and adaptive model of the ASP series droid used for gathering, harvesting, drilling, hunting, building, and generalized labor. The base model was capable of only the most menial tasks, but the ASP-7 was designed for easy upgrades. Their programming could be easily adapted, and their physical structure contained many unused upgrade ports where new hardware or tools could be fitted. They seemed to use a speech module different from the standard ASP variant of Cbell one as their droid speak consisted of a variety of sounds. They were known for being the best seller model of the ASP series droid. The DLC-13 The DLC-13, also known as the Droid Lava Collector on Mustafar, 
Panning Droid was a fifth degree droid modified by the Techno Union from the Calabac Industries information cataloging droid. These so called panning droids operate on Mustafar, mining minerals from the planet's lava rivers. The droids produced on Mustafar itself were programmed to use their scanners to locate materials brought to the surface of lava by tractor beam. The panning droids were fitted with large underslug collection buckets to transport minerals from the river back to the Techno Union Harvesting Center. In addition, defense against the scorching heat of the planet, panning robots were fitted with low power deflector shield generators, though losses to the flames of the lava rivers were still high. The panning droid possessed only a rudimentary droid brain. Its orders were transmitted to it from the primary mining facility. Although expensive, these droids proved their worth by their enormous profits gained from mining rare elements. Following the culmination of the Clone Wars, several panning droids bore witness to the duel between Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader. One droid, currently devoid of any particular task, set its photoreceptors on the duel as it progressed across the precarious terrain, while another one became more personally involved. Escaping from a fallen lava collection arm tumbling over a lava fall, Vader leapt onto the carbonite head of a panning droid in order to pursue Kenobi. Vader used the force to override the droid's steering controls, distressing the unit enough to cause it to drop its collection bucket into the lava below. I really hope you liked the five classes of droid series. We do Star Wars Sunday, well, every Sunday. So subscribe, like, and so you can get more information on the Star Wars universe. Take care and have an awesome day.